sort of got a great yearning? Is there somebody who, who, who's no longer with us you'd like to play, you'd wish you'd met or played with? Well, I'd love to have met, you know, uh, you know, people like Elvis and that who are sort of legendary, you know what I mean? Mm. And uh, but, Jim Reeves as a whole, there's so mm. many people, but Hank Williams, I'm still, well, Elvis was long, a... long, long gone, but... Uh, mm. They still revere him in country music circles, and he mm -hmm. still has the record for the most standing ovations in uh, really in the, in the Grand Ole Opry. And I think he died mm -hmm. when he was only 29, but left this wonderful legacy uh, catalog of songs mm -hmm. behind him that are still being recorded today. Yeah, Elvis is one that comes up a lot, and because he covers sort of, should we say, the country, the gospel, the rock and roll, everything. Really, Elvis covers sort of a, a, quite a quite a few genres, doesn't he? Um, sure, he he comes favorite. up with a lot of people's influence, which is great. You know, oh, huge. And I must have mentioned, I should have mentioned Lonnie Donegan, because oh, when yes. I was playing on the guitar, he was a sort of hero. I remember sitting about 13 rows back in the Liverpool Philharmonic, trying to watch his chords to see what he was playing. I, was, <laughs> I remember uh, listening guitar, to but, uh, no, at my early, I think the early Presley stuff, uh, the Sun Records stuff's my favourite, yeah. because it was raw Elvis and that wonderful rhythm and everything, uh, with, fantastic. With the old Carl Perkins stuff as well. He yeah, he was yeah. great, wasn't he? Yeah, I, I was brought up with, I, I mean, I remember my father playing Lonnie Donegan when I was a young man, I'm early 50s, and my father played, I remember playing uh, Does He Chewing Gum Lose, it, lose Its Flavour on the Bedpost Overnight and the Rock Island Line. As a boy, it was... It was <laughs> He he was amazing because I, I remember seeing him on TV because obviously he was only like two channels then, and That's he was right. playing like the old washboard and things like this, and he was unbelievable, wasn't it? it yeah, was... yeah, he had so much life. That's what yeah. got you because after all the sort of I mean I like the crooners and everything, but after that sort of gentle and sort of slightly show busy stuff, along he came and sort of mm. blew it all away. He was like a, <laughs> a tornado of sort of life, you know. He, uh, he was great to watch, and he had that great life in him, mm. and. Uh, yeah, he certainly, and he didn't just influence me. I mean, he did a tribute to him in the Albert Hall, and there was people like Brian May and a whole host of really? really famous yeah. people who said Lonnie Donegan. Because he was sort of was came over upon them. He came over as a sort of to me the first sort of what I call showman, if you if you like to put it that. Not only was a mu musician, but he was a, a sort of showman. He's, you know, there's people who can play instruments, but um, when they get on stage, are not. Charismatic, I know, yeah, I know world. what you mean, but he had the charisma and the he did. He was. A, I remember he was. Life. Yeah, I remember him. But um, let's take another quick break. We're going to uh, play uh, the song "The Fall in the Mirror." This is from your new new album called uh, "Silhouette," yeah. and then we'll, we'll talk about that when we come back. Okay, mate. There was a man who thought he knew it all He climbed so high but had so far to fall He never saw the warning signs Or read between the lines He always thought that he was in control Was unconcerned about how the dice might roll his self-assurance fell apart When she walked upon his heart Now he's a shadow of regret No rest from things he can't forget He's just a lonely silhouette Of what is gone He never dreamed she would walk away Thought she would love him till his dying day Took care for granted, now he knows That's not the way love grows Now he's a shadow of regret No rest from things he can't forget He's just a lonely silhouette of what is gone His heart is all but broken He's just a shadow of The mighty man he used to be Before he lost her love
She never dreamed she would walk away Thought she would love until his dying day Now every morning him I see For the food in the mirror is me Now he's a shadow of regret No rest from things he can't forget He's just a lonely silhouette of what is gone And she's gone And she's gone Yeah, she's gone And she's the blues you're really going to love wednesday nights on seclo sounds i'm going to be playing the best in american roots boogie and gospel featuring music by the greats and some of the not so well known from charlie Patton to eric clapton and beyond if it's blues it's going to be here so please join me howling dick wednesday nights at eight o'clock with blues from the mk delta here on seclosounds.org bringing communities and people together. Right, that was uh, The Fall in the Mirror um, from Charlie's new album called Silhouette. It's 29th, unbelievable. Um, tell us a little bit about The Fall in the Mirror. I know I see him every morning myself, but... <laughs> <laughs> I'm your mate, because I do as well. But, uh, no, it, uh, to me, it's got a bit of a spaghetti western feel to it, you know. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking about when I was writing that, but... Uh, it's just a love song, you know, of uh, somebody taking a, a lady for, for granted and her disappearing and uh, him realising what he's lost. It's a very simple, sort of straightforward song, with, as I say, with a slightly spaghetti western solo in the middle of it. You know? Yeah, it's, 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 it, it's actually slightly different than the, the rest of the tracks on the, on the album, really, isn't it? It's a little bit... It is, yeah. Um, well, with the wonder of, of uh, technology now, I mean, there's quite a wide, diverse selection of stuff on there because we've got... Uh, as I say, with technology now, we sent some of the tracks over to Canada. We got this fantastic harmonica player playing on some of them, uh, Roly Platt. And there's a track on there which is a bit strange. It's where we've got the, we did the same thing, but we sent it eastwards this time. We've got an Indian flute playing on one, so it's it's really? like Mumbai meets Nashville. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, that is a slightly different one. And there's some rock types on well as rocky as I'll ever get really and there's, uh, the ballads are always there and mm. the country music covers are there as well so it's, it's a mix yeah. I hope people will enjoy because you um, you were uh, you um, signed to Ritz UK and then they sort of went out of business and then you in 2001 you signed up with Telstar and you started doing stuff with them that's right um, yeah, you, and, you, you know more about me than me, mate. Well, I'm trying. I've got pages. You would not believe. <laughs> well, it's, it's, I seem to have. A, I seem to be a bit of a jinx because they just say Rich went defunct and I joined Telstar. And, and they went the day, you know. Yeah. <laughs> so maybe it's my influence, but uh, <laughs> no, they, they were good at the time. And uh, when I got that break on Irish television, I was with Rich, and uh, mm. they had the, the machinery in place to feed the demand that followed that television show. Yeah. So. Uh, I suddenly went from playing the dockside pubs uh, to being on the road round Ireland and uh, playing in these wonderful venues to full houses and everything. Yeah. It, was, uh, it was a bit scary, but it was exhilarating too. But of course, in them days, it was only two channels. I think we just mentioned two or three channels. So if you were on TV, you uh, 
in front of millions of people, not, you know, like sometimes you could be, if you're on TV now, in front of half a dozen people, you know, which is... Oh, you know, that's right, yeah. You know, it's a real thing. You, you've been together with uh, Mick Clerkin for quite a few years. You're, well, not not together, but you've um, no, been he, writing Mick's together. No, a good friend of mine. He was yeah. managing the, the manager of, of Ritz, and uh, he had the, you know, the foresight. I mean, he took a lot of chances early on, Mick, because uh, he... I think he came to England and he went round the, uh, the record companies with a song called, I think it was One Day at a Time by, it was an Irish girl, which was a big success in Ireland. And everywhere he took it, they said, no, we're not interested. And uh, no, that's no good and all the rest of it. And what they did, they got, uh, there was a Scottish girl singer whose name eludes me now. They got brought here and recorded the same song and I think it was the biggest selling song of the year. So he was... Uh, I remember the song. Like that. Yes. So, well, I'm going to I'm going to start my own record company, and I think he he took some chances, and borrowed some money that he you know he could ill afford to pay back at the time, but it it paid off, and uh, fair play to him, you know. And as I say, he was in place when I got my break, so and that yeah, makes a good friend. And that's Rosette Records. That was Rosette Records. Ritz became Rosette. Mm. They changed form somewhat, and. Uh, yeah, and I had a great few years with uh, surrounded by the Irish on the road, and uh, that was great fun as well as, you know, musically great fun. It was uh, a bit hilarious too because uh, they were real characters I had around. me. Okay, and then you you then joined up with Demon Records of, uh, about three or four years ago. That's right. Yeah, they were based down in London, and uh, they've been very good with me. And yeah. You know, they've given me a free reign when it comes to recording, really. They don't, they just make suggestions, but they don't dictate. And I go away, and we, me and the producer pick the tracks between us, and uh, we set to work, and we give them a finished product, and mm. uh, hope that they like it. So it, it's very brave of them to just give us free reign and let us uh, well, obviously, have a poetic I mean, license, you know? Well, you've, you've made a few albums, so I think you know what you're doing nowadays. Um, is there a, an unfulfilled, do you have an unfulfilled ambition? Is there something you'd like to do? Uh, I, not really, because what I've always wanted, I've got. All I wanted was a life in music, and uh, yeah. it's it's nice because I'm not a superstar at anything, and uh, I've got a degree of anonymity, but I'm doing the thing that I love, and, uh, and I've got a good following of people who've become good friends to me. And I suppose if anybody said, if you stretch the imagination, what would you like to do? I suppose it would be to sort of uh, do a tour of Germany or something. Yeah. Or do a, do a duet with one of those I know, people that I mentioned. I know you mentioned earlier you're not, not much of a dancer, so Strictly's out of the question, <laughs> is it? <laughs> well, I had the legs, but never the rhythm, you know what I mean? Uh, I, I've <laughs> got neither, so we're in serious problem on there. <laughs> I'm absolutely useless. Can't dance to save me life. I have uh, trouble walking half the time. <laughs> uh, some mornings I have that trouble myself. <laughs> not, not this morning. We're all right. I, I, I guess I, I've seen you played at Goodison Park. Are you? Um, yeah. So are you, are you one of the Blues or one of the Reds of uh, Liverpool? No, I'm a, I'm a Red actually. Oh, are you? I so that was sacrilege yeah. when you had to do that. <laughs> but uh, I sang on. In fact, it was a wonderful day. I came all the way down from Scotland where I was doing a show drove back and within an hour of getting back to the theatre I was on stage but uh, it was wonderful and I remember Ken Dodd was coming off the pitch he was also a Liverpool supporter and all the old Everton players were there they were lovely and he said tell us a joke Ken and Ken said with his wonderful voice you know well there was this chap he said he had very bad ears you know, you know. anyway this bloke had very bad eyes sorry and his wife took him couldn't afford Booper or anything so took him to a backstreet quack and uh, he, he did the eyes for like 150 quid and uh, she brought him back uh, two weeks later. She said, you've made a right mess of his eye. <laughs> he, said, uh, he said, what do you mean? She said, you put it in upside down. He oh. said, oh, I'm sorry, I've never done that. He said, bring him back next week and uh, I'll put it right. She said, no, leave it. She said, he thinks Everton's top of the league. <laughs> 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 and he told that to the Everton players. So you can imagine the response. But uh, no, oh. it was a great day. And uh, I'm not that partisan. I'd love to see Everton do well and, and all. But yeah, my... I think if you're a football fan, you you know it doesn't really matter, is it? Really, it does good. I was really also you you, you did um, you got invited to close Ireland's special paraplegic Olympics. Yeah, that was fantastic. I mean, I wrote the song I mentioned before, special for children, and mm. uh, I think those uh, the majority of people there were Down syndrome, uh, who I think are fantastic, uh, they're lovely, uh, they're full of uh, love and kindness. And uh, it must have took me about an hour and a half to get out because they all wanted to put their arms around me. Uh. I said, what typifies the spirit there? I read in uh, read somewhere that one of these special...